Okay, welcome to the podcast, Manus Labashain. Thanks very much for coming on. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to join the podcast. So you're born 22nd of June, 1994 in Klerkstorp, South Africa. What does your early childhood look like? And hopefully I pronounced that right. <laughs> nah, um, spot on. Um, what does my early childhood look like? Um, yeah, um, I was, obviously I was born in a, a small town um, in, in South Africa. Um, I was very, you know, obviously my dad, my dad's work was the one that actually moved us over to Australia. Um, but yeah, sort of my early childhood cricket um, really looks like um, I played school cricket from the age of six and seven. Um, I played sort of a couple of grades up, uh, loved cricket since a very young age. I, I played cricket, um, you know, my uncles used to throw me balls when I was two, three years old. Um, so I was hitting from a very young age, which is, um, which I think is a good thing. Um, and yeah, and then I sort of had a little bit of that early childhood cricket journey in South Africa. And um, I moved over when I was about nine and a half, ten, to Australia, where the sort of journey started in Australia. And then I believe when you moved to Australia, you didn't actually speak much English. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, I only spoke a little bit of English. Um, more, I mean, I could understand a little bit, but in terms of in classroom, I, I was very poor. Um, so that took a while to get used to, but You'd be surprised how um, how quickly you pick it up as a kid. Um, I think back now, and I, I almost shocked um, that I didn't have more trouble sort of communicating um, outside of you know in the playground and and, and talking to kids. So um, it was obviously something I picked up pretty quickly. And then with the to you mentioned your dad's work there, so that's what got you out to Australia. Um, was he a cricketer as well? Yeah, he was a cricketer, um, but I don't think that's what brought him over here. Um, he works in uh, the mining industry, so that's what brought him over here. But um, yeah, he's a cricketer. My mum was a netballer, played a lot of netball when she was younger. So, you know, I come from sort of a family that loved sport, um, um, especially sort of that South African culture. It's very sports orientated um, and there's probably not as many options as there are in Australia. Um, in South Africa, you know, you play cricket or rugby. Um, and that's pretty much it. So um, they're the sort of the two options that I played when I was younger. And then when you moved to Australia, was it just cricket you focused on or did you play everything as well? No, nah, I played everything. I loved it. I played a bit of um, AFL. I played tennis. I played rugby. I played cricket. Um, but my, my love for cricket was, uh, was obviously a lot different than all the other sports. I enjoyed the other sports and enjoyed playing uh, pretty much anything um, that, that involved hand-eye coordination and, um, and and skill I loved. Um, but cricket was definitely something that was uh, a lot closer to my heart and that, something that I really loved doing. Yeah, and then with that, did you, as soon as you moved to Australia, was it straight into the Queensland pathway or did you have to go through club cricket or school cricket first? Um, yeah, I, look, I joined a club. That was one of the first things. We arrived here sort of midweek and by the end of the week, I had a cricket club and I was playing cricket that following Saturday. So within three days, I was playing cricket um, of arriving in a different country, which was pretty good. I'm pretty privileged there with my parents. They were amazing and, and supported me there. They, that was the first objective was to make sure that there was a, that I was playing cricket somewhere. Um, yeah, and it didn't take... Uh, like I, I think I joined the Emerging Players, which is uh, the Queensland sort of junior player group um, at age 11. So about a year I played and then I joined that and then I was sort of slowly sort of filtering into the system. Yeah, and alongside state cricket, you obviously played grade cricket as well. Um, given that's something that you go back to still now, I think you were playing the other week. Um, do you feel that has played a big part in your cricket and do you still feel like it actually still develops you now? Uh, yeah, certainly. I'm playing this weekend. So um, playing this weekend, making a playing against Valleys. Um, but yeah, I love great cricket. Um, I think it was a it was a very big part of me of my journey um, and learning what I needed to do to to actually get to the next level. Um, uh, yeah, I learned so much. I mean, um, I had some really good um, club cricketers that were really around me in my early stages that showed me that really competitive spirit, that hard work. Um, and yeah, it, it was something that I, that, that I still draw on now. And it, I, I still learn every, every game I play, I, I, learn, I learn about myself, I learn about the game. So 
I don't really think it even matters what sort of level you're playing. You can always learn something from someone and um, and make sure you're growing as a player. Yeah, and then alongside your your grade cricket, you spent a couple of seasons in the UK. So uh, I think as an 18-year-old, you went to the UK, played Premier League cricket in the Kent Premier League uh, for Sandwich Town, and you had quite a um, quite a season. But did you find it tough or as an Aussie? Because obviously I've done a season in the, in Australia and it's... You know, you get targeted quite a lot. Did you get the same? Yeah, um, yeah. So I've actually played. Two, I've played two seasons. I played one um, when I was eighteen in uh, Plymouth, the the Devon Premier League, um, and then the following year I came back and played in the Kent Premier League for Sandwich Town. Um, and I loved it. Uh, once again, it was another experience. I learned so much about myself, um, about performing as an overseas. I think that was something that I never had that sort of pressure on me before and, and I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, your team relying on you to score runs, you needing to turn up every week to make sure that your team wins games um, was, a, was a different challenge that um, for a young player, I don't think, um, you know, that exposure really helped me on the journey, um, you know, moving forward. Um, oh, look, oh, I didn't found it tough in, in the sense of, of, making friends and, and that sort of thing you know both clubs that I was at was amazing um the people I still have friends now I still talk to the people now one of my best mates is um is from that from the club I played at he was 14 or 15 when I went over there right. and um yeah he's lived with me for almost a year and a half in total in Australia when he's come here and played for my grade club here um so oh, I've made friends for life and I think that's something that you really can't um take back yeah, I mean, you had quite a season. Uh, you took 36 wickets, you had 32 catches and a stumping, uh, and you scored 2,132 runs at 78.96 with a highest score of 203 not out. Um, so you certainly didn't succumb to any pressure. Just talk to me, were you keeping as well as bowling then? No, look, uh, a few. Uh, I put the gloves on a few times in the Sunday League, Sunday League games. Um, um once again, I love, I actually love keeping. Um, I'm just not that good at it, uh, but I love it. It's a part of the game that I've always uh, enjoyed. I kept a few seasons in fifth grade when I was younger. Um, and that back then I did bowl. So I bowled, I bowled, I kept first and then bowled it after lunch. So kept them bowled as the old school um, <laughs> sort of change up. Um, yeah. So I, I think, um, yeah, a little bit of keeping there, but um, yeah, that, that was only in the Sunday league. The pro, we had a, we had a proper keeper then when we we're in it for right. the proper comp. And then the following summer, you returned back home uh, to, and you made your debut for Queensland. So you sort of got rushed through pretty quickly, um, and then opened the batting. You scored eighty three. What are your memories of that day? Yeah, so to take you back. Um, yeah, so I came back. Um, and and I scored a I scored a couple of hundreds in in the first few games of the the season, and um, Usman Khawaja broke his finger and an opportunity came up and um, you know I, I was scoring some runs at the time and 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 I got an opportunity to open the batting. Um, I remember being very nervous, um, but you almost overamped the situation a bit. I remember going out there facing first ball. Joe Burns was at the other end. And the first ball came in and I remember going, wow, like, you know, you almost put on a pedestal and you think, geez, this is like, I'm playing first class cricket now. And then it's, you know, it, I mean, it's certainly different in the consistency and the pressure and those things, but the actual skill level is, is you know, I, I was like, oh, wow, okay, I can do this. You know, I remember facing um, Chad Sayers and I remember, you know, it was a very good batting wicket as well. Just to clear, it was a beautiful Adelaide Oval batting wicket. And um, yeah, I think gave me a lot of confidence sort of just getting through that first over. I think I got my first runs, a back foot punch for three. Um, yeah, and oh, look, it, it was probably two ways that innings. I, I always remember I threw away 100 there for sure. Um, I got a bit greedy. I got a bit confident in myself and I, I decided to keep trying to sweep Adam Zampa and I got LBW trying to sweep him um, at a time where, you know, the wicket was beautiful to bat on. You know, I, I'd been batting really well and I sort of threw it away. So it's one of those ones you don't get back. You always wonder, geez, imagine if I just, you know, knocked that in for one and just took my medicine for the next 17 rounds. I could have, could have had 100 on the boom. 
Yeah, and with that, you obviously opened the batting that day. You sort of fluctuated where you've where you've batted. Is it just where the team needed you at the time that you just go to? And then you settled it, obviously, three now, really. Yeah, I think it always there's always an opportunity that opens up at um, at the top of the order. I think it's one of the toughest spots to bat. And I think there's always an opener, uh, you know, that's not scoring runs or there's an opportunity there um, for, for, a, for a young player to come in. Um, so you always find that there's always an opportunity, usually at the top of the order. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was, I was, I, I think I was actually talking to someone about the other day. Um, I think I've opened seven innings for Queensland. Right. Um, seven out of 50 games or 51 games. Uh, and I think I batted four probably 20 times and three the rest and six once. Right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a mixture in there. But, um, yeah, I certainly always love batting at number three. It's uh, by far my favourite position in the order to bat. Um, yeah, I don't really know why either. You just feel comfortable. Yeah, sometimes it's the sort of hardest place to bat because you've sort of switched on from ball one. Uh, whereas at least at four, you can sort of rest a little bit, particularly if you have a long day in the field. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I think you're spot on. I think I, I appreciate that uh, that ability to just kind of come off the field straight in, get focused and and then be straight in the game. Um, you know, I like being in the game all the time, so it kind of suits me. I, I actually struggled um, at first when I, when I batted at five or six for Australia um, because, you know, the waiting time, I didn't know what to do with myself. Yeah. I played my innings, you know, 10 times over in my head before I even got out there. Yeah, and alongside actually playing, you obviously just love the game. Um, there's a brilliant YouTube video, uh, which is you playing a bit of garage cricket, um, which I'll put in the, in the uh, bio of this podcast. But uh, tell me a bit about that, because you record everything, you, you have stumpings, everything, you have stump mic and stump cam, everything like that. Oh, yeah, look, um, we take it very seriously, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, look, a few of, you know, all my mates, um, you know, we always love mucking around, you know, we love the game. And I think that's where it sort of stems from. Every young kid comes up, grows up. Their love of the game started from, you know, having the TV on in the living room and playing cricket in the backyard or in the garage or in the living room or somewhere um, while you're watching the cricket. Um, so I, I think I, I really enjoy, you know, getting my mates over, playing a bit of garage cricket and, and, and throwing a bit of banter around, getting really into it. Um, yeah, and we take it very seriously. You know, we have scoreboards, leaderboards, rankings, you know, all sorts of things. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun. That's probably obviously helped you as well because 2014, you took a, a great catch as a subfielder. <laughs> uh, sort of uh, for Australia, obviously, uh, against India. That must have been pretty special. And tell me about that day. Yeah. Um, yeah, once again, that was my first season for Queensland. And um, I remember not doing not doing too well of a job at 12th Man. Um, it's not something I'm, I'm very good at. Um, I get distracted very easily, but... Um, Chris Rogers got hit in the head and um, got concussed and um, Darren Lehman, uh, the coach at the time, came up to me and said, oh, mate, are you any good at short leg? And, you know, me being, yeah, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm great. You know, I was, I was sort of like, mate, if there's an opportunity, if I get the field for Australia in a test match, absolutely, I'll take it. Um, anyway, so I, I sort of was fielding a short leg and, and you know, luckily enough, um, you know, when an opportunity came up, I was able to to take an opportunity and, and sort of make it count. But um, yeah, it, it was very surreal sort of experience, um, you know, especially to sort of not be really known at that stage. Yeah, did you feel like sort of added pressure? Obviously in that side, I think you had Shane Watson, Steve Smith, Brad Haddon, Mitchell Johnson, obviously some pretty special players there. Yeah, look, maybe it's just because when you're young, you don't really think about it too much, but yeah, not particularly. Um, I, I, I sort of just, I just wanted to be out there so badly. Um, and, you know, at that stage, that was my only opportunity as a sub fielder for Australia. And, you know, if that was the only opportunity I had, at least I, you know, I fully took it on and, and, and was really excited to, to sort of do it. And then following that, you went back into first class cricket. You made your maiden first class century. Uh, making 112 uh, in just your eighth Shield match. 
Um, you also scored 273 runs, uh, averaging 45 in the One Day Cup, um, and were named Player of the Tournament. This must have been sort of like a a great moment for you. People often talk about can you make that sort of step up each time, and it seems every time you have, you've actually been able to to make that step up. Yeah, uh, that's sort of what it what it looks like. Um, yeah, look, I, I always wanted it. I was very determined from a very young age. I, you know, all I wanted to do was play cricket for Australia. Um, it was sort of, you know, it was my goal. It was my dream. It was, you know, everything I did was was to try and made sure that, you know, I was going to be able to achieve that goal. Um, so, yeah, all those, all these, you know, all these little um, sort of stepping stones or, you know, steps towards that, that, that goal of representing Australia in test cricket um, or on one day cricket was, you know, was these little steps, you know, being player of that tournament, um, you know, that, that, that was a bit of a shock at that stage. I didn't really expect it. Um, um, but but yeah, they're, they're all, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, they're awards that you get, but it's more about the experience and being able to be actually out there and experience these things um, that make you the better player. Yeah, so I was going to actually go on to that a bit later on, obviously, with Test cricket, but just on that, so you're not actually someone, some players are really driven by by awards, uh, but it seems like you're, like you said, not so driven by the awards. It's actually about um, almost succeeding for the team. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I, I certainly, you know, my job is is to win games um, for whoever I'm playing. You know, if that's for Australia, my club team, um, you know, Queensland, Glamorgan, you know, whoever I'm playing for, um, it, it's to it's to help the team win. Um, and you know, if you have a you know decent day and and and, and you know your team wins and you've been able to contribute, you know, you're still content. Um, that said, um, you know, you always want to be the best. You want to be the best possible that you can possibly be. Um, and, you know, I've got some great examples of, uh, of great players um, that are, you know, that are, that are ahead of me. And, and they're, you know, the likes of David Warner, Steve Smith, Kane Williamson, Joe Root, you know, all these guys. Um, they're great examples of, you know, players in the modern era being able to play in all formats. Um, and, you know, for me, that's that's my goal is just to, to be as good as I can be and, and try and be the best. Um, that's sort of, that's sort of the goal. You, you always want to be as good as you possibly can be. Yeah. And then straight after sort of that amazing season with Queensland, uh, you were selected in the cricket Australian national performance squad. Um, it looked like that was some pretty grueling uh, training with them. Could you tell me a bit about what, what you had to do with that? I think you did some stuff in the mountains and. Yeah, well, we had a few tough, um, we had a camp, um, I actually didn't go to the to that camp. I went to the Queensland camp at that stage, um, but I loved it. Uh, I just love training. Um, it's something that I, you know, I wake up every morning excited about the fact that I get to go to training and get to catch balls and field and bat and bowl. And um, so, you know, whenever there's a training day, it's never, you know, I'm never not waking up going, like I don't want to be there. Um, so I loved it. There was heaps of training. Um, you know, there was some physical stuff, but there was heaps of skills and, and all these, you know, different types of training, which, which I loved. So that was a great experience. And, um, you know, it, it really um, prepared me for, you know, for what was to come. So, yeah, you mentioned about the sort of next stage before. So 2017-18, another great year for you, Sheffield Shield. Uh, played, got the team of the year with your 795 runs at Fed 9.75, including two centuries. Um, but you also got called up to the Australia test side um, and the tour to UAE to play Pakistan. Um, so you mentioned it before, you were selected to bat at six um, and then ops, m more so bowl your leg spin um, out there. So what one, must you remember is your debut and two, how did you sort of find that <laughs> being at the top of the order for Queensland or the top three? Um, yeah, look, I, I found it quite challenging, to be honest. Um, I remember um, sort of, you know, we lost the toss and we obviously fielded on, on my debut and um, uh, I got thrown the ball maybe later in the game when, um, you know, when they were, the wicket was flat and they batted really well. And we'd spent a fair, a fair bit of time out, out the field. And um, yeah, I remember um, sort of, 
you know, Payne taking a very good catch to, to one of my sort of crossing leggies that, that, that was nicked by Asad Shafiq. Um, and look, I, I remember after I batted in that innings, um, just to fast forward a bit, I remember thinking, geez, I'm going to be that test player that's actually not going to get a run. You know, I've, I've taken a catch as a sub. I've taken a catch as a player. I've got a run out and I've got a wicket, but I haven't got a test run. Um, you know, I, I remember laying in bed that night when I got a duck, got caught short leg and going, mate, this could be it. This could be, this could be it. Like I could be. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to get another opportunity the next game and, and I think I got 28 and 40 and, and a couple of wickets again but um, yeah it was definitely my bowling that sort of kept me in the hunt in those earlier earlier days uh, when I was a player and you also got selected in the one day squad uh, but you didn't feature in in that side um, have you always been considered more of a Red Bull specialist you touched on it before there that you want to be in every format yeah spot on um Look, I, I don't know. I think I, I've, I, I definitely enjoy the shorter formats a lot. Um, I mean, there's no doubt that, that, that Red Bull is my favourite format. I love, I love the challenge of test cricket. I love the challenge of, of, you know, the endurance part of the game, but also the tactical and the mental challenge and the physical challenge. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've always wanted to play all formats. Um, I don't want to be ever pigeonholed in, in, into just being um, sort of, you know, you're only a test and one day player. You can't play T20 cricket. Um, but like I said, everything comes in its own time. Um, you know, I've got to keep learning as a player in the shorter formats of the game and make sure I keep growing and learning my trade and learning my craft so that I can continue to be the best um, for Australia at that number four position in one day cricket and, and obviously batting at number three in test cricket currently. Yeah, and then off, off the back of that, sort of tour um you were recalled to the test side uh, in place of Mitchell Marsh um you actually had a pretty lean year for Queensland that year um and there was quite a lot of media attention around that uh, how did you find that obviously having not really had much hype in the media uh with regards to Australia stuff to then almost be called back into the test side uh with quite a lot of almost controversy around it yeah um yeah it was definitely an interesting time I think you know, like I said to you um, about, you know, those early stages when you play, um, when I went and played league cricket over, you know, you use all those skills that you learn about, you know, making sure you have to score runs. You know, the team needs you um, to make runs every day. And, and you can kind of fall back on those skills um, that you learned in those earlier days that you almost, you know, know subconsciously now. But yeah, there was a lot of talk, obviously, when I came back and especially in that Indian series where um, I came in and bat at number three. Um, and I think my first class average then was about 31 or 32. So it was definitely nothing to be, um, you know, to be thrown at or get excited about. But, um, you know, they, they obviously saw something um, in me, if it was, you know, character or if it was something, you know, you, you got to ask, you got to ask that JL or the selectors. Um, but, um, and, and once again, it was probably my leg spin that, that kept me in the hunt there. Um, that, that sort of made it, you know, was an option for them as the second spinner in Sydney um, and could also bat in the top six. So it, it kind of worked together, but um, yeah, it definitely, um, definitely was a bit of a surprise, but I think, you know, all these things you learn so much from, you know, I learned so much about myself in that period of time as well. Yeah, and then 2019, saw you actually come over to the UK. So uh, you played for Glamorgan, um, had a very impressive season, scoring 1,114 runs at 61.89, including three centuries in your first three matches. Um, how was your time with Glamorgan? And obviously in the background, which we'll get onto, the Ashes was brewing and bubbling up behind that. Yeah, well, I was very excited to, to actually sign with Glamorgan um, because I, I saw it as an opportunity, one, to just grow and learn as a player. And I've always wanted to play county cricket, but also, um, you know, it was almost a second chance because, like you said, I had that lean year in, in Shield cricket. I also didn't really, um, you know, score that many runs in the test matches that I played. I think I got an 81 against Sri Lanka and I got 38 against India, but, you know, nothing, you know, massive. 
Um, so yeah, for me, it was just an opportunity for me to go out there and actually score runs, score runs, um, and, and put runs on the board. Um, cause that's the only thing that mattered at that stage for me was just to keep putting runs on the board hundred after hundred after hundred. Um, and, you know, obviously with the help of Matt Maynard there, um, which I really enjoyed working with, um, I learned so much, um, in that short space of time that sort of got me ready for when there was an opportunity in the ashes. Yeah, and then you mentioned that opportunity there. So uh, you made history in the second test, replacing Steve Smith as a concussion replacement. Um, how daunting was it facing Joffre Archer at Lords after that incident, what had just happened, uh, and sort of what was going through your head, or did you manage just to clear any sort of thoughts? Yeah. Um, look, I mean, when, when I saw Steve get hit the, the day before, you know, things start filtering through my head straight away. You know, I'm like, well... You know, I'm a like for like, right-handed, bowl a bit of part-time league spin at that. So, you know, if he was to go down, I'm a like for like replacement. But then when he came out again, you know, all, all those thoughts just went. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to keep training hard. And, 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 you know, it didn't really give it much thought, really. I was batting in the nets the next morning. And I, I can honestly tell you, I didn't even really think about it again um, until until – you know, um, Tim Payne came across to me and said, mate, you're playing. Um, and that was that was about 11 o'clock or, or 10 o'clock maybe because um, we came down early to training. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, uh, and from then, that's when I sort of switched on, which probably helped me in the long run because I didn't have to actually roll around at bed, not get any sleep, think about, you know, facing Joffre Archer the next morning. Um, you know, so you just go out there and, and, and sort of, have a crack and, and enjoy the opportunity. Obviously, uh, one of your first deliveries was was a bumper from Joffre as well. Um, it's quite a, well, on the, obviously the Amazon series, the test is a brilliant series, but on there, it's, it's a funny little clip of you, uh, obviously not funny getting hit, but the sort of the way you just sort of bounce back up straight away and like, no, fine. It's like, w what about that? How was that incident? Yeah, look, I had this weird feeling um, you know, I almost felt like I was going to get hit. And I always said to myself, if you get hit, you just have to get up. You have to get up because you can't be the first player that like concussion sub to get concussed. Like, like you can't literally go out there and get concussed and come in for someone that's been concussed. Like, so you just have to get up. And I always remember saying that. And obviously, luckily it hit me in the grill and, you know, it didn't hurt. So I was able to just bounce back up and sort of, you know, just move on but it was one of those weird feelings that I got you know before the, before the game but um you know I was able to obviously get up from 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 that blow from Joffre yeah and then you didn't really look back in that from that moment on uh the series you finished with 353 runs at an average of 50.42 uh including four 50s um this must have been obviously not only very rewarding but sort of for you, just to say, like, I'm here to stay, sort of a, a bit of a statement. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely, you know, one of those, especially those first two innings I played um, at Lords and at Headingley. Um, it gave me a lot of confidence to, 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 you know, say that I belong at this level. I think whenever you're a young player or debuting, and no matter how confident you are or how skillful or how good you are, you always have those doubts and those thoughts come into your head, you know, are you good enough for this level? you know, can you, can you make it, can you play, you know, test cricket? Um, and, you know, those two innings um, and obviously, you know, Steve Waugh actually said something to me. He said, if you can score runs today, you know, you scored runs today, like it doesn't get tougher than that. It doesn't get tougher than that. Like you, you can do this. And that gave me a lot of confidence to, to sort of say, look, I can do this. Like, you know, I just need to, train hard, focus, make sure, you know, I do the same thing. So you always, um, you know, I, I think that gave me a lot of confidence, um, you know, to take, to take, you know, my game to the next level. And you certainly did that. So you, you scored your maiden test century at home, uh, scoring 185 against Pakistan. You followed up that test. Uh, that was the first test. The second test, you scored 162. Um, and you just started churning out massive scores. Was this something that had clicked technically? Or was it mentally or was it a bit of both? Um, I think technically the, the stuff sort of started clicking in England. Um, 
you know, technically I made a few changes to my batting um, and they sort of started clicking in England. Um, I think what really started clicking was that like concentration, the, the focus, the mental application to make sure when I got in that, you know, I've got big scores. You know, once I got that first hundred um, at the Gabba, I was able to really almost relax a little bit and actually go, righto, you know, it's all process, you know, just keep trusting the process. Don't get swept in by the emotion of, of, of the runs. Just keep sticking to the process, you know, whatever your, whatever my process was, you know, make sure I keep doing the same thing over and over to keep that consistency going. And um, that really helped me, you know, kind of get those back-to-back big scores. Yeah, and then you carried on. So Australia then hosted New Zealand uh, in the Test Championship. Again, impressive scores, 143 and 50 in the first test, 63 in the second test, and then 215 and 59 in the third test. Um, how sort of relieving was it to, well, not relieving, but rewarding, I guess, to, to get that double century after scoring a couple of high 100s? Um, yeah, like I said, it's one of those personal milestones that you don't really think of, but when it comes, you're, you know, you're obviously very excited because it's not something that comes, you know, every innings. Um, but I think once again, once you get there once, you know, you, you go, right, oh, that's what it takes now. I've got to try and do that every innings. You know, when I get to 100, you know, stick to the process, keep trusting your game. I think, um, you know, it was very satisfying, obviously, getting that 200. Um, yeah, it just makes you feel, you know, like, okay, I can do it. You know, I can get big scores. I can do it consistently. Um, you know, the challenge is, is you know, not to do it for one year. Um, but, you know, you look at the likes of Virat and, and, and Kane and, um, and Steve, and, and they're doing it, you know, they've done it now for five, six years. So um, that, they're the things that I look up to and I go, like, these are, the, you know, these are the guys you're chasing, you know, these guys are doing it back to back years consistently day in, day out. And that's why they're, you know, some of the greatest players the game's ever seen. Yeah. And then you, you finished that year um, as number four test ranked batter, um, scoring 1,104 runs in 17 innings. Um, quite unbelievable, really, if you look back. So the start of the year, you weren't featuring in the test side. By the end of the year, you're in, you know, top four batters in the world. Um, again, that must have been great personal milestone, but also sort of something that you just believed in your own game. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Yeah, you, you know, you look back at it and you're like, geez, that was a quick, things happen so quick, you know, in such a short space of time. I, you know, you, you know, you've gone from sort of, you know, barely being, you know, in the best 12 players in the country to, to you know, being um, in the top four in the world. And, and, you know, that's a satisfying thing to look back at, but, um, you know, I kind of keep going back at it. Um, but, you know, you just, you know, you want to stay there. You want to do that year in, year out consistently, um, you know, scoring the big runs. Yeah. And then alongside that, March 2020, uh, you scored your maiden ODI ton. Um, this time actually back in South Africa. Uh, how was that scoring that back at, you know, your, your country of birth? Yeah, it, very exciting. Um, you know, great opportunity. Um it was only about 40 minutes from where I was born in South Africa um, in the town that I, you know, I used to come there as a kid as a, you know, five, six rides where I watched my first cricket match, um, you know. Um, so, and it was nice to have all my family and friends there and um, to experience that moment with me because I don't think you'd be anywhere in the game without, you know, those really important people in your life. Um, so, yeah, that was, that's a moment that I'll never forget. Um, and, that, you know, it's one that I'll treasure for a long time. Yeah, and then in the most recent series, back to Test cricket uh, against India, you finished leading run score with 426 runs, averaging 53.25. Um, how is it that you maintain this sort of hunger for runs? Because you just seem to keep churning them out. Is it just a love of actually batting? Or is there something behind that which just makes you makes it work? Well, God, I, I mean, I think it's everything. Um, you know, you've got to have the desire and the want to be out there, to be scoring runs consistently, to be to want it um and, and then secondly you know you obviously have to you know have the behind the scenes the training the you know the structure the game plan the you know the preparation and stuff like that which is you know very important i think most players would say that's sort of the the cornerstone of their games is is the preparation the focus the making sure you're coming into the game right um 
but yeah, like I said, um, I hate getting out. Um, there's nothing worse, you know. I, I just remember, you know, almost related to when I was a kid. You know, there's nothing worse. You get out and you have to sit down and watch the game. Um, you know, as a kid, um, that was like the worst thing that could possibly happen to you, because you know you, you want to be playing in the game, and now you're sitting and watching and waiting and um. So I think, you know, my desire for, for batting out there definitely um, stems from sort of even those younger days where you just, you know, you always want to be in the game. You always want to be playing. Yeah. And then one thing that's really stood out um, recently, obviously watching the Big Bashes, the Test Series finished, you were straight back playing Big Bash cricket. Um, it just looked like you absolutely loved it. You are on the mic a couple of times uh, and just seemed like you just, Every ball, you just wanted to be involved. doesn't matter if you're batting, bowling or fielding, you know, you just want to be there, which, which just looks brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it was a really nice change of format, um, you know, to go into the Big Dash and actually play play some games um, for the Heat. Um, it's obviously, I've only played about 15 or 16 uh, Big Dash games. Um, so I haven't played much T20 cricket. So I'm always eager to get back there and learn as much as I can in the short space of time that I'm there. Um so that was very exciting to go back there. And, and, and like you said, I love just being involved in the game and the T20 format. Um, you know, obviously I bowled a lot more and, and you know, you're, you're fielding, you're always moving around. Yeah. Um, and I was able to contribute um, in sort of all, all three aspects of the game, which is, you know, which is a lot of fun. So um, it's, yeah, it's one of those formats that I don't play much, but um, you know, I love, I love getting back there and, and being involved in them. 